So you've been using Scratch for a little while and you're pretty comfy with the operator blocks. But then there's that gnarly one that has all the drop down options. What on earth do they mean? Well, in this tutorial, we'll look at the Scratch, Sign, Cos, and 10 options of that drop down menu and what they mean. Stick around to the end as well and I'll show you how we can use these blocks to make a game. Coming your way in just a sec. Hey, welcome to the Sign, Cos, and Tan tutorial. This tutorial is going to work best with people who already have a good understanding of lists and have some basic understanding of trigonometry, specifically Sokotoa. If you don't, go check the card in the top right hand corner right now. That's going to link you to a Khan Academy video on the unit circle and I strongly encourage you to watch it if you have no idea what I'm talking about. It's a bit of a journey trigonometry and if you're just starting out, be persistent, you'll get there. Our focus is finding out which values we can put into the sine, cos, and tan functions, as well as the inverse functions of a sine, a cos, and a tan. We're going to do that creating a worked example like you're seeing on the screen right now. We'll get to that in part two. I think it's great using a worked example so you guys get some familiarity with the values. Okay, let's first start with the sine, cos, and tan functions. What values can you put inside of here? We're going to jump across the unit circle to check it out. I'm here on the wonderful website GeoGebra and we've got a unit circle here. How do we know that this is a unit circle? Well, the unit circle has a radius of 1 all the way around. Values that go inside the sine, cos, and tan functions, they're angles. And you can see that here on the screen as I move this slider. I'm changing the angle here of this right angled triangle and it goes all the way up to 360 degrees one complete rotation or revolution of our unit circle. Now, I've just reset our angle back to zero degrees and there is no angle here on our triangle. And you can see here our values, cos is equal to one and sine is equal to zero. So if we put the zero degree value inside of our trig functions, these are the results we'll get. So let's jump back over to Scratch and check it out. Okay, so if I put in the number zero here for our zero angle, the sine of a zero degree angle is going to be zero. So if I click this and boom, that's what we get here. Let's put the same angle in here for cos. What do you think we'll get? That's right, we get one. We're gonna skip over tan just for a moment. And instead, we'll enter in some different angles here. So we're gonna enter in a 30 degree angle. And let's check out the return values. For the sine of 30 degrees, we get the value 0.5. And for the cos of 30 degrees, we get 0.8. I'm gonna round that up to 87. Okay, let's head back over to the unit circle. Now I'm back over here at the unit circle. And you can see I've updated the angle to 30 degrees. You can see that the cos value is 0.87 and the sine value is 0.5. Now remember our unit circle has a radius of one. So here's zero and on the outer edge is one. And it makes sense. This red line here, it's on our X axis. And it's about 87% of the way, all the way to one, isn't it? There's about 13% difference. The same goes for the sine value. Now sine kind of refers to the Y axis. So remember our radius, our full radius is one. So all the values between zero and one and our sine is about halfway up that. So about 50% of the way. So the big takeaway from this, that cos refers to the X axis and sine refers to the Y axis. And this is true for all angles that start their rotation from the X axis, like we're doing here. Now the way that I like to remember that is through this little memory device here. I'm not cosy, and cosy looks like cos y, but we're not cos y, we're crossing instead. And I've matched that up with the c's of crossing and cos, and the x for crossing. So cos is crossing or going across the x-axis. If you remember that, then sine y is just the opposite. Alright, now that we've got some understanding that sine means y and cos means crossing across the x-axis, tan is just the slope of our radius here. So to measure the slope of this line here, we just use the formula rise over run, where rise is y going up for rising and run is like running across the x-axis. And we can represent that formula in Scratch by duplicating our sine and cos blocks here. And we can get the division operator block. And remember it's rise, which is the y-axis, meaning sine, the sine value over the run, which is the x value. Now, if I click that, we get this long number here. But just remember 0.577. Now if I type in 30 here to tan to align all of our angles here and I press it, look at that, we get the same value. Now I'm just going to reset our angle here back to zero degrees. You'll see that's when cos is equal to one and the height is equal to nothing. So that's making sense. Now, as I increase the values here, you can see the X axis reducing and the Y axis values increasing, get all the way to 90 degrees where the X value or cos is zero now and the Y value is at its maximum. If we continue that, you can see that the X value is actually going negative now and the Y value is getting smaller. And when we go beneath the X axis, 
That's when y is less than zero and it becomes negative. You can see we're starting to get some negative sine values. What we're gonna do now is head over to Scratch and code up all these angles so we can return all the values of our sine, cos, and tan functions. What I'd like you to do is open up Scratch, open a new project, and head over to the backdrops. And I'd like you to add in here the background, the XY grid. We're gonna create a new variable. Actually, we'll just rename this one, and we're gonna call it angle. We're going to, when the green flag is clicked, going to set angle to zero degrees. Then we're going to repeat for a full revolution of our circle. So a full revolution is 360. And then we want to change our angle by one. So you can see here, as I click the green flag, our angle is incrementing. Now we're going to make three lists. We're going to create sine values, cos values, and tan values. So you can see here, we've got those three lists. And the thing I like to do before we start mutating those lists is just to delete all of those values. We're gonna delete all the values of cos, all the values of sine, and all the values of tan. Recall that the sine, cos, and tan functions, they all take an angle. So what we'll do is we're going to add to sine values the sine of the current angle. We'll grab our angle variable. So remember, the angle is incrementing from zero to 360. We're gonna have 360 values in here, which means we'll record all the values of the sine of this angle. We'll do the same thing for cos and tan. I just duplicated, but remember to change the list that you were inserting those values into. Lastly, we just need to click the green flag and get all of our values here. Now the list item number could refer to the angle, but you can see here it's slightly off. Because remember, for a zero degree angle, the y value should be zero and the color should be one. To get around that, you can just set the starting angle to one. You can see at the beginning, when the angle is one, this is the value of sine, cos, and tan. I strongly encourage you to look through these lists now and check out the range of their values. So when I scroll down here, and I know when I get to 90 degrees, sine's gonna be one, and then it reverses. The opposite happens for cos. It sort of starts at one, and then it decreases all the way down when the angle's 90 to a value of zero. And tan does something even more funky that we'll see with the graph when it gets to 90. It ends up at this infinity value. See if you can figure out what the maximum value of sine is and the minimum value of sine is, and do the same for cos and tan. So remember the sine, cos, and tan functions take an angle, and the sine and cos functions return values between negative one and one, and tan returns values between negative infinity and infinity. But they pass through negative one, zero, and one. Before we start drawing, I just want to quickly talk about the inverse functions. For the sake of being pedantic, the A here stands for arc, it's arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan. But I'm just going to call them A sine, A cos, and A tan. So if the sine, cos, and tan functions take an angle and return a value between negative one and one for the large part, for sine and cos at least, then these inverse functions, they just do the opposite. So we click on this function here, we get 0.5, which is the return value of sine of 30. So if we input 0.5 into the a sine function, we should get an angle of 30, and we do. Try the same thing for cos and tan in the inverse functions, so a cos and a tan. The inverse functions, just take that value between negative one and one for a sine and a cos, and negative infinity to infinity for a tan. But you can't actually type infinity into the a tan block. These inverse trig functions, they're super useful to calculate the direction of any sprite. And you'll see that if you work through the game of this trig series. That's probably a nice place to park this tutorial. In part two, we're gonna go ahead and graph these trig functions on the stage right here using some sprites. I was gonna combine it with this one, but it got a little long, so we're gonna chop it up. But now you know which values to put into the trig functions and the inverse trig functions. I strongly encourage you to revisit the unit circle, link below in the description. And also go check out the Khan Academy videos if you're a bit fuzzy on trigonometry. Remember, it's a journey, but you've got this. All right, it's time for a surfing scratches shout out. This one's been a little while in the making and it goes out to bananas underscore 20 who requested a more advanced operator box tutorial. Thanks for your request bananas underscore 20 as that gave me a little wriggle on to make this tutorial. Do you want a scratch shout out? Well, there's a few ways that you can go about it. The first one is remix one of my projects and show me what you did to it. Show me how you adjusted to it and share it with me. The second way is to make a video request on my scratch profile or on one of my videos. If I catch it and I make the video, I'm going to give you a shout out. The third way is to join the Surfing Scratcher shout out studio. Yeah, bit of a mouthful. All the guidelines are over there. There's a link in the description. And the last way is to join the highest tier of my Patreon page. A link below in the description. Hope you enjoyed this Scratch Sign Cos and Tan tutorial. I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.